In the early 1600s, the Kingdom of Sweden was rapidly establishing itself as a major European power, and was conquering new territories around the Baltic Sea. To continue its expansion and to move further into the European continent, Sweden would need to upgrade its aging navy, which was lagging behind the other great powers of the day. To that end, the king, Gustav Adolphus, commissioned a series of royal warships which would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other ship in Europe. These would be royal warships in every sense of the word. Each would be armed with a total of 64 bronze cannons, 300 troops, and would be decorated with hundreds of wooden sculptures. Construction of the ships was contracted out to a pair of Dutch shipbuilders, Henrik Hybertsen and Antonius Monier. They started work immediately in the shipyard in Stockholm, and after three years of work, the flagship, the Vasa, was ready to make its maiden voyage. On the 10th of August, 1628, the Vasa was ready to depart. The captain, Sofring Hansen, planned to sail the ship through the Stockholm archipelago to the naval station at Alfsnaven, a journey of about 100 kilometers. Along with the crew, hundreds of guests and family members were gathered on the deck for the maiden voyage. Thousands of spectators lined the shore and watched as the ship unfurled its sails. Suddenly, a gust of wind was funneled in by the surrounding cliffs and caused the Vasa to lean to one side. The ship seemed to recover, but then another stronger gust blew in. The Vasa's gun ports were open so that the ship could fire a salute as it left the harbor. As the ship leaned over, the gun ports dipped below the surface, and the icy waters of Stockholm Harbor came flooding in. The Vasa sank in a matter of minutes, less than 200 meters from the shore. Most of the people on board were able to be rescued by nearby witnesses, but many of the people who were below deck at the time didn't have time to escape. Around 50 people died in the wreck. An inquiry was convened to determine who was at fault. The surviving crew blamed the shipbuilders for making the ship too top-heavy. The shipbuilders blamed the crew for operating the sails incorrectly. In the end, no one was ever convicted. Most people blamed the ship's designer, Henrik Hybertsen, but he couldn't defend himself. He had died of an illness nearly a year before his masterpiece was completed. And that would have been the end of it. Divers recovered the valuable copper cannons from the wreck around 30 years after the sinking. After that, the Vasa sat at the bottom of Stockholm Harbor for more than three centuries, largely forgotten. Then, in the mid-1950s, an archaeologist named Anders Fransen began scouring the harbor in an attempt to locate the wreck. In 1956, after almost three years of searching, he found pieces of wood at the bottom of the harbor. Further analysis confirmed it. Franzen had found the wreck of the Vasa. Even more exciting, submerged in a cold, low-oxygen environment, the wreck was miraculously in one piece and was incredibly well-preserved for more than 300 years. The question now was, could it be saved? A team made up of representatives from various government agencies and private salvage companies came together to try to find an answer. Teams of divers spent almost two years using water jets to drill tunnels through the mud under the wreck. It was risky work, with the water jets kicking up blinding clouds of silt, the divers could only hope that the wreck wouldn't shift while they were tunneling underneath it. After they finished, cables were strung through the tunnels and attached to pontoons. As the pontoons were filled with air, they rose, slowly lifting the wreck from the sea floor. It took another 18 months to seal the hull and clear hundreds of tons of mud from the deck. With the wreck made airtight, on April 24th, 1961, the hull was pumped full of air, and for the first time since the 17th century, the Vasa began to float on its own. The ship was towed into a specially built dry dock, and a race against time began. Removed from its cold, watery tomb, workers had a limited amount of time to preserve the wreck before it would begin to deteriorate. Preserving the Vasa was a project that would take decades. The hull was sprayed with a synthetic compound, polyethylene glycol, which filled in the cavities that were left as water evaporated out of the wreck. The process took a decade as hundreds of tons of water slowly evaporated. Meanwhile, archaeologists working with the project worked to clean and preserve the thousands of artifacts that had been found during the recovery process. Throughout the late 1980s, a museum was constructed around the wreck, while the preservation process continued, and in 1990, more than 30 years after its rediscovery, the Vasa was ready to be shown off to the world once again. The museum showcases the restored Vasa in all its glory. Surrounded by the thousands of artifacts that paint a picture of what life was like on board a ship 350 years ago. Researchers with the museum have also studied the skeletons of the victims of the disaster, which were recovered with the wreck. This helps us understand just who these people were. 
Preserving the Vasa is an ongoing struggle, as the methods that were initially used turned out to be imperfect. Researchers are using laser scans to monitor the shape of the hull and track any deformation, and they are working to de develop new techniques to fight the degradation of the ship in order to preserve it and the story it tells for centuries to come. I've included links with more information in the description, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, click here to subscribe. Thank you.